Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending April 21st. Uh, within probably a few minutes of when I post this video, I will be leaving out for Fermilab, where some of you have seen in the past I have posted things from Fermilab because my brother-in-law actually works there as a physicist. He will be conducting some tours today on Sunday, so the family is going down there. I will bring my camera as usual, always have my camera with me, so if uh, there is anything out of the ordinary, I know I've posted a lot of Fermilab stuff in the past, but um, I'll put together a little bit of something, at least one video's worth of what's going on down in Fermilab now, especially because of the fact the Large Hadron, Hadron Collider is functioning, so Fermilab pretty much as far as their cyclotron, it's pretty much shut down, but that also gives an opportunity for the people that visit the tours to actually go down in the tunnel and see parts of the cyclotron, so I think overall there should be, should be enough to make at least one decent video out of it. But first up, on the technology front, this is uh, this is something I've talked about before too about dark matter and how I believe as far as if they think dark matter is just a different type of particle I don't really believe it exists in that form well there's some more confirmation to at least my idea of how it may work out they've done uh, they took readings of about 400 nearby stars in uh, from our solar system in the Milky Way and they have found for some reason they should have been able to find a lot more uh, dark matter existing there and according to all the different readings and the way gravitation works and whatever effects they actually uh, were testing for they found no evidence in our region of any kind of dark matter whatsoever it seems like everything is accounted for as far as normal matter this is from the Daily Galaxy and the title of the article is Milky Way appears to be void of dark matter the mystery of dark matter deepens a new solution for the missing mass problem must be found um, it could be just a matter of how we understand the way gravity works too. It could be just some, maybe some tweaks in gravitational theory or something else going on at some other level. But yeah, I don't think all of a sudden we're going to have um, radical new particles that we don't know exist all of a sudden appearing out of nowhere. But it's a rather interesting article. It's quite a few paragraphs, so if you get a chance, uh, check that out. This is a little interesting thing. This author at LaptopMag.com, he uh, just recently had a newborn child and so he was talking about 15 different technologies that in his mind probably won't even exist by the time his child becomes uh, an adult or maybe even a teenager and some of these things I can really see the point he's got 15 different things he picks from I'll just mention you can go over to the article as usual I'll post all the links down in the bottom in the description but go and take a look at the 15 items there's a couple of these I have a complete disagreement with and there's actually a couple of these that probably they are pretty much dead within, if they aren't already, they're probably very close to dead already. Um, one of the things here he's got listed as point-and-shoot cameras, like a dedicated uh, camera that's just for use for cameras. I believe the low-end, the point-and-shoot type of cameras probably will in the next 10 years be gone because people's smartphones can basically do the same thing. But dedicated cameras for serious photographers, um, action type of sports cameras, stuff like that, I think they'll be around and strong even in 20 years. It's just the selection of uh, low-end point-and-shoot cameras probably will eventually disappear. And he says movie theaters too. That I totally disagree with because movie theaters are doing fine right now. They're not, they're not doing that horribly. And the reason being is people do not go to the movie theater to see a movie so much as they go for the movie experience. You can always put the DVD in a widescreen TV at home, but it's still not going to be the same experience as in an auditorium with other people, and especially just the, the largeness of it. If you don't live in a mansion, how are you going to be able to experience just the, the sheer volume of the place you're sitting in, which really, to me, adds to some of the effect of watching a movie. I mean, when you're sitting in a place that's four times larger than your house, uh, the average person can't do that. But he's talking about uh, also hard drives, too, conventional hard drives he's talking about. They will probably uh, very shortly be dead, and yeah, I agree, it'll be switching to solid-state drives. He talks about wired Ethernet. Yeah, my, my only computer is the one that I'm using right now that's wired. All the rest of the computers in this house are pretty much work, working on wireless, but there's 15 of them total. If you get a chance, take a look or come up with your own idea, some technology that's still being used in some form or fashion that's pretty much dead now. Um, another one is landline phones. I know people that for 10 years have never had a landline phone. I finally actually, I'm probably one of the big Luddites when it comes to that, but I finally just had to give up and cancel my landline phone because it just wasn't being useful and I was paying and paying. I'm probably saving $500 a year by canceling my landline phone and it just, it was more trouble than it was useful to me. So I finally got rid of it. Everybody carries around cell phones anyway. 
And this one from the BBC News. This is from Glasgow, Scotland. Thank you, Hank Two Wheels. He's been sending in some pretty good material, too, especially some real nice uh, science type of material. Uh, some of you are aware that we're, the cost of 3D printing is getting down to where even the average person, if you're a pretty serious hobbyist, you'd probably be willing to pay about $3,000 for a 3D printer to where you could print out different models, especially uh, using plastic resins and stuff like that. Well, this is the next step forward in 3D technology to where they use a printer that is something that maybe in the future we'll be able to get a hold of, but they print... Um, I'm going to simplify it and say they print test tubes and reactions is what it is. You'll have to read uh, the title of the article is DIY Drug Stores in Development by Glasgow University Researchers. And what they do is they actually print out the 3D vessel that the reaction takes place in plus the chemicals for the reaction all in one thing. So you get your test tube and you get your chemical reaction. And in some cases, the vessel is part of the reaction. In other words, the vessel is made out of molecules that are maybe catalysts or something like that. So you just basically program the 3D printer in, walk away, come back an hour later, and you've got your reaction vessel and your reaction. And they're talking about in the future, uh, laboratories could use this to print out drug compounds and things like that. Now, I have one thing that I think we're going to have to be uh, thinking about in the future. We're, we've run into it with uh, music. We've run into it with uh, copying music. We've run into it with uh, videos, uh, movies. But can you imagine now that people can copy 3D objects and even copy drugs? Uh, if they let that get so cheap that even individuals can get a hold of these 3D printers and be able to copy uh, uh, tableware, uh, dishes, uh, toys, you know, you can copy maybe your own Nerf gun or something like that. You want to see the lawsuits fly to and people get all bent out of shape. I mean, when we can start making our own 3D objects and it becomes rather trivial to do so, you're going to see people going to jail for copying designs. I mean, you have somebody take a 3D photograph of a chair or something like that and then go home and then print out the parts to uh, put a chair together. Uh, uh, and basically just look for the same probably 10 times over of what we've been putting up with for uh, music and movies and stuff like that once it's... Uh, making 3D objects becomes rather trivial. I mean, you're going to probably be a terrorist just by owning a trademark design, um, a 3D design of any kind. And last up, this is just a little picture I want to share with you guys. Uh, I tracked it down. I found a copy of the picture, but this was not posted by the person that took the, the photograph. But this is a picture of a praying mantis on a plant. And I tracked down where it was from. This is from the telegraph.co.uk, which I've used them before. And... Uh, the photographer is named Iko Suparman, and he is from Borneo, Indonesia. He was in a cemetery, and he was just trying to take macro photography. He's a student, and he was trying to take macro photography of insects. And while he was looking at this plant and noticing how it looked kind of like a bicycle, this praying mantis just happened to climb up on top of the plant. And actually, to me, it even looks more like a motorcycle, actually, because of the way the back of the praying mantis looks. But I think this is a really cool picture that this guy ended up snap, snapping up, and it's great that he gets uh, the Telegraph to publish it for him, and it's being shared in Google+, and probably on Facebook, too, I imagine. But So anyway, that's it for this week, everybody. You take care, and I will catch you next week.